Cody. Mm-hmm. Uh, multiple choice. Yes. Most teachers will avoid them because um, something says that they have low educational value. And I remember when I was a student, we used the term Skinner box that just were multiple choices. And some people thought that you could learn anything just with the help of multiple choices. Definitely not. But what if I tell you that you can actually improve learning and be more effective as a teacher with the use of online quizzes. Okay. Would you be willing to try? I would try. Then uh, we will make this video about how to improve your teaching with online quizzes. Answering good questions and getting immediate responses can increase students' learning. An autocorrect free sub teacher time, which can be used for more personalized student guiding. If you have an LMS, you probably have a quiz tool with a lot of advanced features. Training videos from the LMS provider and from other teachers, which can often be found on YouTube, are good helpers for aspiring quiz masters. But here are a few starting tips. If there is to be only one right answer, make sure all of the other alternatives, the distractors, really are wrong. If you ask, why can fungus live underground? Both because it doesn't use photosynthesis and because it doesn't need sunlight would be correct answers, although one might be a better explanation than the other. In online tests, you can easily use videos, which can provide a good basis for analytical questions. Which isn't right questions will not tell you if the student knows what is right, and eager students might miss the negative. Make sure none of the terms can mean more than one thing, if the other meaning can confuse the students. And silly distractors can be fun, but add no extra value to the test. Even multiple choice questions can reveal complex knowledge if the students must analyze a complex meaning to select the correct alternative. Asking why a phenomenon occurs or something happens, or how something occurs or is it connected to something else, can reveal deeper understanding or misunderstanding when the alternatives are clear. We know teachers have good intentions, but sometimes we can all get so carried away with the task of creating ingenious questions and answers that we accidentally set traps by using too similar terms or too clever grammar. Creating good multiple choice quizzes requires some practice, but it can be well worth the effort and good fun too. And your online quiz tool probably has a setting for randomizing the order of the alternative answers, so you don't have to. Most test tools will let you mix and match questions from previous tests, and maybe even share your tests with other teachers, making quiz creation easier and easier. Most online quiz tools have a variety of settings, including question types, even for multiple choice like radio buttons, drag and drop, connect the equal answers, yes and no, and, you guessed it, multiple choice. Mixing them up within the quiz tests the student's ability to decode the quiz when what you want to access is the actual topic, leaving the reason for any wrong answers a bit foggy. Most quiz tools have an optional timer. Reasons for timing could be assessing if students can perform a simple arithmetic procedure without using a calculator. But a timer can be a stressful element that lowers performance. Use the quiz tool's feedback option and assign helpful hints on the distractors to help the students see why they are wrong and what would be the right way of thinking. The hints are set to be visible only after the student submits the quiz. Let them do the test again as many times as it takes. It can also be a good idea to give feedback on the right answer. It could be that the student just made a lucky guess. 
take the quiz yourself. Then have someone else, ideally an older student, take the test to weed out errors in grammar, scoring, etc. Quizzes could be set to give a final score or grade. This is useful in the summative assessment process. If the quiz contains question buttons, where the students can select multiple alternatives, and the tool hasn't got a restriction feature, use negative scoring on the wrong alternatives, the distractors, to avoid students ticking all the boxes and thereby getting full score on the quiz. But in general, negative scores can be very demotivating and should probably be avoided. If there's more than one correct answer, we can score the correct alternatives differently. In our first example, why can fungus live underground? The alternative, because it doesn't use photosynthesis, could receive a higher score than because it doesn't need sunlight, because it represents a more accurate explanation. As mentioned, you can provide the students with helpful hints and let them do the test until they have understood the material. You can also give them a test at the start of the topic and then again at the end. Improvement can in itself be a motivating factor for the student. In an online course, there is often less informal interaction between the student and teacher, and positive feedback, even from an algorithm on the computer, could be the friendly nudge a student needs to continue the work of learning.